couple loving YouTube friends. God, you know, I think that might be my new intro to my videos is that thing screaming straight at the camera. God, is that thing badass listening to. Well, we got four of our sleds out of the shop running, ready to put inside the trailer. So we got them all lined up out here, right behind me here. Trenton just took a little rip around the yard on three fingers. <laughs> that thing's sick, absolutely sick. But we got four of them lined up out here. We got wet basement, freebie, three fingers, and bastard and bastard. Oh my God, that thing's just such a beauty. It sits in the corner all summer in the corner of the shop all covered up. And God, when we pull the cover off that thing, every time I think, why isn't that thing just sitting out in the middle of the shop all summer to cover off so we can admire the beauty of that thing? Built that a few years ago and that thing is sexy and gorgeous. Oh my God, the black with the pinstriping. All that stuff was done in the 90s when all that pinstriping was going on. I think it was actually 89 when that hood was done, but oh my God, is that thing gorgeous. Got wet basement out here, running freaking sweetness, three fingers. Worked all day yesterday, Christmas day. We had company kind of coming in and out, so I kind of split my time between the house with company and the shop trying to get this clutch cover done. Because Trenton wanted to do some test pulls on this thing. Oh my God, would you look? Now that I'm looking through the camera, that looks even better now. Jesus, that clutch cover. Look at that thing. Oh my God, I built this clutch enclosure for that thing. Trenton polished it up today, branded it with one of our stickers. Oh my God, is it gorgeous and beautiful looking? We did some dimple dyeing to vent it out so we can get some of the heat out of there. That's the one thing I'm concerned about is the heat. But we did, just, did uh, some dimple dyeing on it. I'll show you some there in the back. And then it could pull some air in through the sides here and stuff too. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that helps on, we'll, we'll test it out. Might not work, we'll see, but wet base on freebie. I got a little story about freebie. She's back up and running, but as soon as we fire all these four up, do a little, do a little run here. I'll go in the shop and I'll show you what, I never wanted to admit to what happened to this thing. And we had it up and running in one of the videos and then shortly after that, I wasn't so happy anymore. So Trenton, let's go down the line. Let's get some fire in the hole. Let's get a bunch of three cylinders ripping out here.
you could be standing out here right now and hearing what this sounds like, trust me, wet basement doesn't sound very happy right now. How long has it been running now, Trent? Maybe a minute so far since it's been, maybe a minute of runtime since it's been fired up this fall, or winter actually. So it's been in hibernation for about 10 months and it just fired up and it doesn't sound the happiest. It may be on two and a half spark plugs, but that's why we put three in these things. You always got extras. They'll run, they'll run back to camp on two. It don't matter. But this thing, oh my God, is that thing rowdy. Well, let's walk inside the shop. I'm gonna show you guys um, what happened to Freebie. And like I said, I was I was actually embarrassed about it. I didn't even want to talk about it because it freaking sucked. And uh, and what the deal was is we we pulled it out of the shop for the second time to put it in the trailer to bring it up north, and she threw a fit again, kicking and screaming. And what happened was Trenton backed it out of the shop and uh, it locked up. It freaking seized up, sitting out in the front of the shop. He was putting the trailer door down, and uh, it freaking ah, done, locked tight. And I'm like, no way. How could I, I'm like, think it through my head. I just built that engine. Did it break a ring? Did a wrist pin come out? I mean, what could have possibly have happened? And uh, we dug into it yesterday. I actually stuck it up into our other shed, and I'm like, I'm done. I'm totally done. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That red, oh my God, that red. That's something. But uh, I'm like, I'm done with this thing. Told the wife, I said, you gotta talk nice to your sled for the next few weeks because it lost its place in line. It's at the end of the line now. I'll work on that thing when I goddamn feel like working on that thing again. And uh, the time came up, we cleaned out the shop and we look at it, it's empty in here. All the, all the sleds are running. They're all going in the trailer, except Freedom. Freedom gets its time in here now, and uh, that's gonna be an extensive build. But uh, what happened is the magnets delaminated themselves inside the flywheel, which does happen. But uh, right there, look at that. The magnets delaminated, and uh, they delaminated and then wedged themselves in the stator, ruined the stator, flywheel's toast, and uh, so I was glad to actually, actually glad to see that's what happened because I'm like, I've built a lot of engines and I've never had one just go like that at idle. I've been going across the lake wide open and had them go because there's different circumstances why they'll seize up, but that one there. So that was a learning experience for me because this, this here has never, ever once happened in any of my engines I've ever had. So I don't know if it's just because uh, the age of this or maybe this was a tough flywheel to get off and I had the polar on there really rattling on it with the impact and it maybe vibrated them. Not sure, not sure what happened there. But they weren't loose when I put it on, but after running it a few times, they did come loose, wedged themselves into the stator and took all that out and it, and it acted like a broken ring in the engine because it, it was squeaking and, it, and you couldn't hardly turn the engine. So.